Bruce Young of Seiko Shorikai. Kai was developed for the preservation of the teachings of the late James B. Tulsa. What we're going to do in this particular tape, we're going to work with what we call, uh, well, what I would call Tanto Jitsu, which is dealing with uh, the, the Tanto blade, the knife, and at the same time, I want to work with you on some of the dexterity work. Now, the, it, it's kind of a funny thing that, that if you have an empty hand art, uh, empty hands have a tendency, no matter if it comes from Okinawa, Japan, China, Korea, or whatever, you're going to see a lot of similarities with, that, with, with it all. Um, for instance, the first thing I'm going to show you in Tanto Jitsu is dealing with a, from a technique called Seogon, or knife power that I saw uh, performed by a Kung Fu practitioner. Later, I saw video footage of a Japanese practitioner doing the exact same drills with the hands. We're going to be dealing with a lot of dexterity. Dexterity work, what you'll have a tendency to do as a practitioner is look at it one-dimensionally and not see how it compares with everything else that you're doing. Uh, there's a saying, the knife that cuts you is a knife you don't see. Uh, the hand maneuvers that, that we will work on, I'm going to try to paint a picture to where you can see some of the, the comparisons with that and using the left, the right, and how it also changes body shifting. Okay, now watch. Okay, the first thing I want to do is we're going to work on some dexterity work and using a blade. A lot of you might do this just as a way to maneuver the blade. <clears throat> what I do is I look at it differently. I'm saying that each time you change the posture of a blade, you're changing your own body posture. At the same time, you're changing the, the activity of the left hand as well as the right. A lot of you don't look at it that way because you're looking at the hand that has the knife, not how the hand that has the knife and how it affects the left hand. So we're gonna, I'm gonna start off with this first dexterity drill and have you work this. First of all, take your blade, whether it's a tanto or whatever it is, you're going to hold the blade thusly between the thumb and the index finger. Spin the blade like so. And what you're doing is you spin the knife, you're going to put it in this cutting posture. Okay? You want to align that cutting motion right up against the forearm. And the reason for this is if I, if I was here and I was doing a knife technique, this is more of a slashing maneuver, which I'm going to cut from about here to the tip of the weapon. So let's say if I were to cut above the eyes, or what have you, that's what I would be doing. Here, this is a pressing motion, where let's say if my wish to bring the blade in tightly. Okay, so we're gonna come one, two, and then from here, you're gonna let the blade come straight down, bring the mid finger in between, much like almost like smoking a cigar. Bring it across, elbow down, bring the elbow back out and around, and bring the blade across. We'll take this motion again. This is one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. Now you notice the different pivot points from the wrist to the elbow and also how the thumb is being maneuvered. That's going to give you different avenues of cutting. This is one, this is two, this is three, and four. Now, from this posture, we're going to bring it back around. So we're going to bring the wrist back in, coming around, bring it between the, the uh, index finger and the thumb again, spin the weapon back to here. Okay? So we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now from here, I can bring it back around to here again. So from this posture again, I drop it back around, in between the index finger and I bring the weapon this way. Now, as you use this, remember how you reposition the left hand. If I bring the blade this way, it has a tendency to make my body lean to the left. So I bring it down, I'm just more almost like a neutral posture, so you take your weapon this way. This is a neutral movement. As I'm moving now the weapon to the right, the weapon is coming across, and I shift the lower base back again, and the weapon is coming across again. From here, I shift back. So now I want to do this shifting in the dexterity work with the body, okay? Now, later then what you can do is you drop it down, shift with the left hand, and bring the blade in the left hand. Of course, you want to do this both right and left. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to start using your body when you're doing this. 
later you'll get more of a more of a rhythm and then later from there then you're working this type of technique okay so you take your shifting you take your body posturing and you learn to work the blade now dexterity what it's doing think in terms of each time you change your body motion you're giving yourself a new angle of attack those of you that are working kosher we have kata doing the same thing in the deliverance of a knife hand block and the deliverance of a punch you're changing several different angles now we'll take this as far as shifting you notice this first motion i'm doing this cause my body weight to come to the left so as my opponent we take it slow starts to move this is what i have i have a shifting motion i block the man but i've shifted the weight now those of you who've seen the other trick tapes that we're doing, for instance, the first one on the Philippine arts, you notice what I did with the right foot as I'm doing the shift. Right foot, start moving, comes in. This puts me, just keep moving, this puts me at this angle. So it's less likely that the opponent's going to see me move. There's a cut. Now what I want you to do is you're going to explain, as I ask you, what you see as far as me shifting. Start moving. If you notice, he can track me. However, if I take that foot and he starts to move, he's here, he's cut. All my cuts are coming where? Straight down the center. It's less likely this guy is gonna see what I'm doing with the blade. Now if you, what I'm doing with the left foot right now, that left foot is up. As he starts to move again, not yet. All I have to do is if I shift the left foot down, the blade enters, it rides up again. So you cut the man again. Got to remember this. If I do this, slow, he can trap. He can at the same time trap the hand. However, if that foot's doing this, it's going to be harder for him to do so. He tries to trap the hand, he's here. So basically, I'm controlling the body. Now, dexterity work will help you understand these angles. The difference of what I'm doing that you'll see most practitioners do is I'm separating the lower and upper base but letting them catch up to each other instead of this, again. So you got this, got this, you got this. The thing is, if my opponent was smart and if he could see that I was fighting this way, all he would have to do is take his right hand and go straight in, slow. And I'm not going to get my cuss across. That's how easy it is to defend against that. Now, of course, he might get cut on the way. He's going to get cut maybe in the arm. But if I'm doing this, this is here. At all times, that blade is right there to center. So no matter what he does, he's still going to get cut. This point in time, what I've done is, because of my left knee, I've got my mid finger. Where is it? Where is it? Where's my mid finger? It's going right up underneath his jaw. This will take the other part. And what I've got is I've got a trophy now. So what I'm doing here is the shifting is taking place here. It's right here to center. It's going to be very hard for this guy to realize where that blade is. Also, by doing that lower body shifting, the dexterity work takes place because I'm going to use the left foot now and shift it inward. So as he goes to that right hand, the left hand is here. And, and so right away, again, the blade is straight across, coming straight here. The idea is, again, those of you who are doing knife, this kind of motion, no. This kind of motion, yes. Because the difference is, again, the guy's not going to be able to do anything. You notice where the blade is right now. It's right up underneath his jaw again. He goes to move. I've got my finger here underneath the scapula. He goes to move. All I just position the foot. Where's that blade going? Straight up and in. Watch again. This no. This yes. You see where it's at? He starts to, do you want to set down at all? No, no. Okay, start to move back. This is here now. Do you totally control the guy? Right now I've got his back arc. If this guy was to straighten up, what would you do? Cut. So, so if I'm going to keep this guy right here, all I have to do is this. The other thing you can do, of course, is lay down. But he starts to do that. Can you lay down? I've got a wedge right here to his lower base, lower back. There's only one place this guy can go right now, and that is up. If he goes up, he dies. He stays put, he end up, ends up with a back injury. He can't lay down either, can he? Otherwise, he'll break his back. 